Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Yasha if you're new here and today we're discussing the different pathways to get into interventional radiology. There's a lot of confusion about it so I just wanted to clear up a few things because I get a lot of questions and a lot of confused comments and you know concerns from medical students and it shouldn't be that way. We should be transparent. So the first way to get into interventional radiology is the integrated pathway that everyone's been talking about and is super competitive. There are not that many spots, which is why it's so competitive. And the way that that works is you do a surgery intern year, you do four years of residency, which is split up between diagnostic radiology and interventional radiology, and then you do a one year residency at the end. That's why it's confusing. It's not like a fellowship, it's just part of the residency and it's one year. Altogether it's six years. And I think during those four middle years, which are the diagnostic plus IR residency, the interventional radiology is at least one year and I think it's the better part of two years that you're spending doing IR. And then the one year of extra residency, which is just IR. So six years, integrated. The second way is to do ESIR. You may have heard of it. It's called Early Specialization in Interventional Radiology. And that's actually done through a diagnostic radiology residency. So a lot, and I would say most, diagnostic radiology residencies have this pathway um, integrated into the residency program where one or more people may be selected for ESIR and that means that that resident will become the ESIR resident. That person will do a lot of rotations that are specific to ESIR and that includes at least I think 12 months of IR so you're again getting a full year of IR in your diagnostic radiology um, residency plus you have to do like SICU which it, and then you have to do, there are a few other rotations that you can do, like I think breast procedures count, you can do like a year on oncology because you'll be spending a lot of time with those clinicians and like vascular surgery, I'm not sure if that counts, but like the point is that you do other rotations that you otherwise wouldn't do in diagnostic radiology residency to, get your, to give yourself a more well-rounded um, interventional radiology residency. And so that's all built into ESIR and that's all built into diagnostic radiology residency. So that becomes one year of intern year, because we all have to do that, plus four years of residency, where you're split into, again, IR and DR, plus other rotations, just like an IR integrated would be. And then you're doing another one year of residency, which is like a fellowship, but you actually have to match. So that means you have to match into a one year residency at an institution that will take you. And most places that have ESIR will, take you or like will help you find a spot somewhere and it's pretty common i think like most places will match people that do esir so esir is a great 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 way if you're not decided on ir to think about doing diagnostic radiology and then change your mind and go into ir this is like my favorite pathway is the esir pathway for med students that are interested in interventional radiology because you get a little taste of both without committing too early. And then the last way is to do what is like the traditional way of doing it, which was one year of intern year plus four years of residency plus a two year residency or two year fellowship at that point. And that way is kind of like, it's still around. I think it's, begun, it's going to become less and less common. And I think the two year pathway is going to start to phase out. And that one year pathway is going to kind of take over and that will assume that either you are an IR resident or that you are an ESIR resident, meaning that you are on that pathway and you have, t you have had those 12 months of interventional radiology during your diagnostic radiology residency. I hope this is becoming more clear. So there are three ways, three total ways to do it. Now, which one is the best? I said I like ESIR the best. So you're wondering, okay, why is the second pathway, the ESIR pathway, your favorite? And here is why. I think that it gives you more time to decide, and I think that's really, really important for diagnostic radiology residents. I think IR is very appealing to a lot of people, but for some people, once you realize how much call it is and how much time you have spent like with lead on and etc., I think that you start to realize like, okay, diagnostic radiology isn't that bad. You know, like we do a lot of really cool stuff, and as diagnostic radiology residents, we do a lot of procedures too. We don't, you don't have to be an IR doctor or an IR resident to do procedures and I think we should everyone should know that that you can be a attending a resident a fellow who does procedures without being an interventional radiologist you can do interventions without being an interventional radiologist on the other hand if that's all you want to do totally go for interventional radiology and like don't look back I'm not saying that no one should do it I think you just have to be really sure 
and that comes with like doing a lot of rotations in med school that comes with having good mentors who will really teach you like what it's like the differences the similarities and ultimately we're all going to be both like all of us are going to do some procedures and all of us are going to do some diagnostic what what your split is is really personal and that's what's going to change like as you go through your career but everyone is doing both you should make a decision that's right for you but personally i think having that time to really figure out if you like ir enough to like dedicate your career to it i think that's really crucial and so for that reason i think that esir is the best pathway and maybe that's because I come from a med school that doesn't have IR. It's totally possible. So if your med school has a lot of IR or you just like are very personally motivated and you are like totally for it, I say go for the integrated and don't look back. One caveat I will mention is that you cannot switch easily back and forth. I think that it's important to realize that interventional radiology programs and diagnostic radiology programs, even in the same institution, are still technically two separate programs. And so switching between one and the other requires that there's an open spot and enough funding for you to switch. I think that in some places, maybe that's easier than others, but it is important to realize that like I can't just change my mind if I feel like it. You really have to be in a good situation where there is an open spot or there's enough funding to follow you where you can change your mind. So. In that way, ESIR is more flexible because you can change your mind a little bit more. It's not like a funding related issue, it's just within the diagnostic radiology program itself. But when you're talking about the two residency programs, they are separate programs and they usually have separate program directors. And, and while they're in the same department, they are two different programs. So I hope that helps clear things up. I'm sorry that that was so confusing. It's just the terminology is really difficult to totally clarify. Just realize that like the end part that we usually call a fellowship is just called a residency and that's why it's so confusing and that there are one year and two year residencies or fellowships and I think that will start to help you understand and I hope that helped. I really hope that helped. So thank you again for watching my videos. I really appreciate it. Um, spread the word if you like my videos. Show your colleagues and show your other med students. I really appreciate that and feel free to send me a question or a message or any ideas you have for upcoming videos. Have a good week. Bye.